Michaela Neumeister, the Curie, has said, whenever I hear about a new art fair starting, it is almost physically painful to me. The art world has become a gypsy circus. And uh, Jerry Salt, who I'm sure many do know, categorizes the situation like this, the downside. The beloved linchpin of my viewing life is playing a diminished role in the life of art, and I fear that my knowledge of art, and along with it, the self-knowledge that comes from looking at art, is shrinking. We're in a situation where there are some significant contradictions that we're facing. Jerry has uh, just brought two of these contradictions to the fold. By, by looking at ethics in my presentations, I'm going to be looking at contradictions. That means, what is an ethical problem? An ethical problem is that you have to make a choice between outcomes. Both outcomes contain good and bad, and you're in a situation where you have to resource that decision, and you have to carry with the, the, your stakeholders the consequences of those decisions. This is the area of, that I spend a great deal of time with in my practice, trying to figure out what those burdens of decision making mean when there is no clear answer. Art fairs are unavoidable, and they are a contradictory phenomenon, and contradictions increase complexity. The main problem is that the more complex things become, the fewer people can typically do something or do it well. Those who can master the, those complexities profit immensely, those who can't, as our panelists have, have repeatedly under, underscored, may be threatened by disappearance. With a rise in the complexity comes an increased risk of failure, also what Elizabeth D. touched on in, at, uh, in her last comment, but not only of a financial dimension. The art context is a, is a web of relationships. Those relationships have always been difficult, uh, fraught with idiosyncrasy, failure, and injustice. So I don't think that the, that the art fairs themselves bring an entirely new dimension of dysfunctionality. But what they do do is bring a different dynamic of dysfunctionality that people may or may not be adequately prepared for. So how does the art fairs affect these relationships? That's, that's what I'm going to try and do in a, in a very few minutes. So I'm, I'm an attorney and my special interest is conflicts of interest. I want to know how we best can deal with these types of situations. So I'm concerned with how stakeholders, that's mean, this means artists, galleries, collectors, and museums succeed or fail when confronted with contradictory needs and conflicted obligations. So let's look at some of, the, of these contradictions as they affect specific groups. We have the contradiction that on the one hand, collectors and visitors get accessibility. This means you get to see a lot, and you get to see it in one place, and it's very efficient. So we know that, that the collectors are time poor. Collectors and people and, and advisors and curators, they want to consolidate, consolidate research, search, and purchase. You know, as Don Thompson said from the, 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 the Shark book, Paris and shopping at fairs is easy. A single dealer might with difficulty assemble three Gerhard Richters to show a client. Dealers at Art Basel can show 12 at the same time. There is the impact of the herding element to all of this, is that the sheer number of people and the sold stickers alleviates collector uncertainty. The fairs have, be, have come into the experience economy, so people don't want to just go to one place and have one kind of a limited aesthetic experience. They want to actually interact in a globalized, jet-setting kind of world where they experience something. So fairs replace quiet discussions in the gallery with a shopping mall, blending art, fashion, and parties in one place. Collectors buy impulsively. They may never visit the gallery of the dealer from whom they buy at the art fair. With each fair, collectors become more accustomed to purchasing art in a shopping mall. Okay, so that's good for the collectors somehow, one thinks. Whereas collectors previously had to consider the interests of a gallery to gain access to works, and indirectly or directly the interests of an artist, because they had to go through a gallerist, and behind a gallerist there was, one assumes, in most cases an artist, uh, collectors are rendered significantly less conflicted by art fairs. They have simpler choices. So if we want to analyze what's going on on that level, why it's not just the, the efficiency, it's also something beyond that, which is the ethical choices of collectors are diminished by art fairs. Their lives and relations are, are, are simplified. They can spend more money easily. But this de decrease in transaction costs seems like a benefit, but it also means that their virtual or idealistic investment is then discounted. There is significantly less incentive to invest in the dealer and the artist. Even as the gallerist makes more money, social, 
and contextual capital is being lost. The structural degradation of social and contextual capital is a significant structural weakness of the art fair. Lo and behold, we have a conflict of interest. The art fair has a structural bias towards undermining the threshold investment of a collector in the artist and gallery relationship. Being able to see works in, in what may appear to be a level playing field ignores the facts that art fair politics, as, as, as astutely been pointed out here, is no less determinate at art fairs than it is in galleries. But there is a difference here, a very important difference in the frame of reference. Whereas a gallerist answers to stakeholders surrounding the gallery, artists, collectors, and others, Galleries at a fair must uphold the fair's standards of interest. A fair doesn't represent anyone. It does not have an agency relationship to anyone. If anything, it survives on visitor interest. As we saw in the previous slide, attracting collectors by lowering their threshold ideal investment makes money for the art fair and the galleries. The art fair has a structural bias as a result to undermining the threshold investment of the collector and the artist and gallery relationship. So this is a structural problem. The art fair, although it cultivates and brings in and calls these organic relationships, it then structurally is, it, it is conflicted and motivated to removing barriers to trade by undermining those relationships. The art fair piggybacks on the relationship while needing to, uh, to undermine it in fact. Then the question is, we're, we're still a little bit with the notion of access or the p potential benefits of the art fair in terms of accessibility. But there are now, for the gallerists, some, some very interesting conflicts. You might be able to see a work at the fair, but is it for sale? Or is it for sale to you? Very difficult to know at times. Whereas the incentive in the old system of galleries to hang works that were pre-sold, borrowed, or otherwise unavailable to build the feeding frenzy was negli negligible in comparison with that at the art fairs. There's an obvious moral hazard here. <coughs> what a gallerist may or may not have done in the confines of their gallery where their practices were under scrutiny over time by a group of often knowledgeable actors shifts dramatically under the pressures and opportunities of an art fair cycle. Thus, the lessening of the investment by the collector is mirrored by a weakening of the bond by the gallerist. And, the, and in the first law of thermodynamics, we know that that energy is going to go somewhere. And that loyalty is going towards the art fairs themselves at the expense of other stakeholders. The problem with that, however, is that gallerists are, are, can't have the same kind of uh, perspective as, uh, as, as, our, as our first panelists have, have, have pointed out, than an art fair itself, with this, which is a money-making machine, essentially. The gallerists, contrary to those who run art fairs, are often agents, representatives, and in fact, fiduciaries of their artists, as Judith, Judith has pointed out. More on, more on that in a second. Let's look a little more closely at the nature of the structural gallerist conflict with art fairs. I, I would I invite the audience just to read these two quotes briefly. Now, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be referring to Matthew a few times, not because I have anything against him or I think he's any pernicious agent in the art world in any way. Simply, he's representing a very strong perspective that he's very clear about. Slotover obviously knows a bit about art fairs. What makes his opinion so glib here is the fact that he's not actually responsible to anybody. He can make it up as he goes along. He does not owe it a duty of loyalty, so he can be as self-interested as possible without moral ambivalence. Ed, on the other hand, is a gallerist. He has a duty of loyalty and being in absence of conflict of interest regarding his represented artists. But if a gallerist cannot fill demand without being at art fairs, then serving Matthew Slotover's double think becomes increasingly important. I will sum up with just a little, tiny little blog quote. The most expensive booths at Free's New York will go for $80,000, but the greater risk for dealers lies in not participating. My conclusion, the cost and economic advantages of being at an art fair will reduce the ability of mid-range galleries to remain viable. So the story is that gallerists either embrace the, the new paradigm and its hidden costs, or perhaps simply cease to exist. So this conflict of interest is having a profound impact on the, the art world as we speak. So let's talk about what this does to, to our artists. So again, we have slot over, we have Jeff Poe. Um, I invite you to read the quotes. The mythical notion that artists can exist on idealism alone and that, that their personalities make them immune 
from being affected by market forces or something else, an act of willful blindness that's self-serving towards the art fair ideology. And let, let me be clear, I am not here to do a cultural critique of art fairs. I'm here to look at the ethical conflicts involved so that we can discuss them, so that people who are in a position in the art fairs can respond to them as well as all other stakeholders in this process. It is clear that gallerists are by law fiduciaries of the artists they represent. The investment that gallerists are forced to make in, in the current market in the art fair model impoverish their brick and mortar galleries, lower the collector's necessary ideal investment, and lower their necessary investment in the collectors. Now, this means that their ability to represent artists changes. Their role becomes one to broker access to art fairs, but the art fair does not represent the artist. So on the way to adapting to the new reality, potentially surviving and making more money, the artist's trajectory and reliance on the gallerist is also reduced. What's the point of a solo show or gallery representation when the gallery does not bring the artist to the only game in town? All gallerists who represent artists are fiduciaries, and the primary responsibility they have by law in those relationships are loyalty. The, one of the very special things about the artist-gallerist relationship is now being shifted by the art fair ideology, and we need to be aware of what that means. For, for those who are perhaps less familiar with, with the definition of a fiduciary and the relationship to loyalty, I invite you just to just spend a moment on the, on, on the text, and I'll come to my, actually to my conclusion, which will touch on these two points. Loyalty, pre-art fair, could mean a, a vast spectrum of different responsibilities. Loyalty past post-art fair may mean little more than more art fairs. So post-art fair could mean being, for the gallerist, being nothing other than a broker to the art fair ideology. This fundamentally reduces the scope of what a gallerist needs to provide, and they may fail as a fiduciary now if they don't produce this outcome. So what used to be a fiduciary obligation in a broad sense to the potential outcomes of an artist, career, etc., Suddenly, we're now in a conflicted situation that if a, if a gallerist is serious, they may be, by some fiduciary understanding, obligated to, to bring that represented artist to a fair, or they're not doing their jobs, while at the same time undermining their very relationships to that artist and their collectors. This makes the gallerist's life more complicated. Uh, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. And the artists are also not unaffected they must be complicit to survive. This is why I say those who care about what they do have to sit down and go through these questions carefully. The whole point about thinking about things in fiduciary terms is to require, is to require by law that certain ethics questions are more than just happenstance. There is no time like the present, and in fact, there will be no time like the present for many who don't take a moment to strengthen their capacities with these ethical issues. We have, in fiduciary obligations, the key thing is loyalty. 